Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I'm doing a playthrough of Back to the Future, Back in Time. It's not Dice Through Time, I had a look at this, but I think I really prefer this one here. It's a proper board game, Not nothing against dice game, you know, and you're still rolling an awful lot of dice in this one here. But for whatever reason, I this really seemed to be more attractive. I haven't played this game before, so it will be a blind playthrough for me. Rules-wise, I think it's really not that big of a deal. It should be. It should play out pretty easily. I have no clue about the difficulty, though, so I'm pretty sure I will go down badly. Overall, the components really do look nice in this one. It comes with this nice little DeLorean. How nice is this? Really, really great. And much love went into, um, yeah, producing this game that's obvious and yeah i think without further ado let's see how things go shall we okay and here we are in the end i decided to do a two-player playthrough because again i haven't played this game before so i have no clue what i'm doing here i also seen on the geek that the game seems to be challenging so don't expect me to do particularly well on this one and yeah i think for some of the more let's call it thematic reasons i decided to play with doc brown and marty mcfly they both come with special abilities they both come with this i think power tiles oh well, that's their standard starting tiles usually they let you roll dice or move spaces on top of this here we have great scott once per turn you may move to the delorean's location can be definitely helpful because some of the actions like preparing the delorean is something that you can only do when you are next to the delorean so i think in this case it's definitely can be important i guess and down here with Marty, we have, this is heavy, once per turn, you may move Lorraine up to two spaces toward you. And he also comes with his starting things. You also see that um, he's rolling the turquoise die. I think that's the wildcardish kind of die. Whereas Doc Brown rolls this, I would say, science die, which allows you or gives you more odds preparing the DeLorean properly. So I think also feels quite thematic. They both start here at Town Square, which none of the NPCs can ever um, access to. So here we have Biff, he starts at the clock tower. And again, those guys will never be able to move the Town Square. So they will always walk around the board here in this circle. Down here, we have the two lovebirds, Lorraine and George, George's house and Lorraine's house. And we also have our first opportunity card waiting down here which is a pretty handy one i think as we get to meet uncle joey draw one um, of those power tokens and again power tokens is something that you really need early in the game to really prepare you for the later game but before we dive in too much into the details of where those opportunity cards are let's have a look at what it is we try to achieve first of all we have to survive it here to 10.04, which is when the lightning hits the clock tower, obviously. Um, and by then we have to achieve some of the goals in order to do that. The thing is, let's say we meet all the requirements here already. We still have to keep going because that's when lightning strikes. Uh, so we, can't, we can lose all the progress we have made by then and really have to make sure we uh, yeah, survive until then. Of course, we have the love, lovely picture here of the McFly family. And throughout the game, those things will be dropped to the other side. So those basically start to cease to exist. And when there's nothing left of this picture, we have immediately lost the game. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the only thing that will lose us the game. On top of this, we have to prepare the DeLorean. Right now, it starts out here. We have to drive him all the way down here to Doc's Brown House. There we have to stop so we cannot move it further until we really have prepared or put all the DeLorean parts together. So we need gasoline, cable, and a hook. And they are already out on the board. So that's at least something that we don't have to, I don't know, find them first. So we know that the cable is here at Hill Valley High. We will find some gasoline here at the South Shops and the hook is up here at the clock tower. We have to do a test in order to get those and they will automatically beam to Doc Brown's house. And when everything is down there, we can then continue moving the DeLorean until it is in this white zone here. In one of those three spaces, it must end when lightning strikes. On top of this, we have to make sure that the love meters in this section here on the board, so this will increase and decrease depending on how Biff is interfering with those two lovebirds. Uh, after all, it's the power of love and 
Again, this is also a condition that must be true at 10.04. So this cube must be here, here and there. The DeLorean must be in the white zone. We have to have all the parts together. And then, if we then pass basically the final test, we have won the game at the end of this player's turn. Uh, it really does sound challenging. And again, as I haven't played this game before, I'm pretty sure I will do very poorly. But yeah, I'm really, really, really looking forward to this. I mean, this was really a movie that, I don't know, shaped a lot of my youth, actually. Uh, we still enjoy this movie today, basically all three parts. But I think I will always, if you would ask me, I will always go back to the original first part, obviously, even though the second part is also quite nice. Um, not sure if there will be any expansions. I could imagine that Prospero Hall already designing basically a game, a full complete game for all the three parts. I don't know, but let's see about this. I think without further ado, let's simply get cracking. And I guess as usual, I will start um, playing or explaining the game as I go. I might have to do some reading in between. Anyway, because again, I don't really have a lot of experience with this one, but I'm really curious how things go. We will start with Doc Brown. There is the one confusing part about these rules. This is also something I try to find some clarity on the rules. I was not the first one to ask, it seems, or we had the same questions in respect to the turn tracker. It really says only the very, very first player or the very first turn is not moving the turn tracker. Then afterwards, every player is moving the turn tracker. So it's not around like in Arkham or Eldritch Horror where you draw Mythos cards. No, everything that happens here will start at the start or will happen at the start of each player's turn, not just at the end of a complete round or so. so in this case, how you can imagine it, so the start player of the very first round will put it here and then will trigger whatever is below that. First of all, we will have to draw our trouble card and then we have to draw a movement card, which will also basically both move um, Biff and also George and Lorraine. Let's see about the trouble card level one here. And you guessed right, we have level one, level two and level three. And by the way, here we have Lorraine and we have Einstein, the dog, who you can always play in this game. And obviously, oh, not Lorraine, what am I telling you? Jennifer, of course, <laughs> Lorraine. Lorraine is an NPC. So we have Jennifer and Einstein. They come with their special abilities too, and you can fully play them. So there's really no limitations with Einstein as far as I know. So we will draw our first level one trouble card. It tells you where it needs to be placed. In this case, the Hill Valley High and Strickland looks for slackers, which is an ongoing effect. All those trouble cards have an ongoing effect and they always come with a nice reward. In most cases, it's also power tub. And here it says players may not attempt a fight biff challenge. I think at the start of the game, that might not be the worst thing in the world, actually, because right now the love meter is cool. Biff is still far away from those. So I think we might have some time getting rid of that trouble card here. But again, it costs us action movement to get there, rolling dice and whatnot. We still need to succeed, but we only need to roll one symbol here in order to meet that requirement. And then we have to draw our movement card as being told by the turn track. I think we can put it right here. Uh, move Lorraine counterclockwise two spaces and we will move uh, George clockwise one spaces, which is, I think, okay, actually. Is it? I think it is. They come closer. And we are not moving Biff. I think that's already a win. I really love the style and the artwork on those cards. It's really so nicely done, this game. So let's move those two. So Lorraine moves counterclockwise, one, two spaces. So for a short moment they meet, but then he's moving clockwise, one space. So at least they move closer together. And usually, at least this is what the rules tell you to do, is to keep those guys together as much as you can, because then you can do this love challenge and increase the love meter accordingly because every now and then you have to do a love meter check and then really bad things start to happen. And now it's our player's turn. Again, we will start with Doc Brown and maybe I really should have reconsidered this actually because right now they are nearby and we have this opportunity card here at Loose Cafe. I'm your density. How cool 
with that, I mean, it's really incredibly thematic. So uh, what this requires us to do, first of all, we need to be a loose cafe. Obviously, we have to have both of those guys down here in loose cafe. And this whole space is loose cafe, by the way. And then we have to do a challenge. And this challenge then needs to come up with one heart. It doesn't really sound very, very critical, but we get to raise the love meter by two for only one action. And we get another power tile. And I mean, that's definitely not a bad thing. It, Doc Brown may not be the best guy to do this, but I think I will still do it because before, when, when we wait for Marty again, we will draw another movement card and they could move all over the place. So I think right now it's the best time to do that. Yeah. So first of all, we need some movement points and we get those movement points from our power tiles here. So this lets you roll a die or we can move up to three spaces. Right now, I don't know if we need this. Is it a wild card? So that's usually a good thing. Uh, the thing is, what would I do next? with my next action actually so i want to hold on to this die and maybe this time maybe we don't want to go for this die next on the other hand we could get rid of the no we will use this tile here in order to move three spaces and again we want to have those guys nearby so we will move one space two space this allows us to take her with us pretty much everywhere we want to go to. And in theory, I could not move on and leave them here. Or I could move George out or whatever. But in this case, I want to stop here or George wants to stop here in order to go for a challenge action now. And that's a love challenge. We have the requirement. We are here at Loose Cafe. We have George and Lorraine with us. So now we get to choose how many dice we're going to do. I think I really want to do this. So I think we will definitely go for this one here. This gives us the love die. So in theory, we could get two hearts out of this and we could go for this die here, which has an awful lot of those uh, wild cards. The... No, that's the fight Biff. What am I told? This is the wild card. This is the wild card, the fleshy one, right? As far as I know. Oh, the stars are not the wild card. What am I talking about? So yeah, we are not going to fight Biff anyway. So I could have also used this one then, right? Hmm. Yeah, maybe. Huh. No, I think I made my choice, whatever. So we are going to flip this one over. I think there are not many. I think there are always two Biff symbols on those dice here anyway. That doesn't really matter too much anyway. So we are rolling those two dice now for our test. And in theory, and also practically, the game comes with the dice tower here, which is the clock tower. I have no clue how this one works. I think we may have to move Biff aside if you're knocking him over. Maybe this will help us. But we are now rolling the dice. And in theory, only need one heart symbol, right? to make it as far as I know. Yeah, that's what it is. So let's roll those dice. And those are two flashes. And by the way, there is a nice overview of the dice, what they are providing you. But again, those are wild symbols, which is totally, totally, totally fine to meet this requirement down here. Draw one power tile. Let's do that. These are shuffled and oh, that's a wild card one. So pretty much we can again use it for movement. And we can basically transform hearts into wilds. I think that's not bad. I think those tiles come into the game flipped over, so we can't use them right away. Kind of a bummer, but that's how it goes. But on top of this, we also get to move the love meter, raise the love meter by one, two spaces. I mean, that's not bad. So this card is discarded, and we will immediately draw a new one. So there will always be three opportunity cards available to us. And let's get your damn hands off her school parking lot. It's a fight or a courage and a love challenge. And as a reward, we get 1P, move Biff to the school parking lot, knock him down and add one knockdown token. That's definitely not a bad thing. So let's place it right next to our DeLorean. Doc Brown still has two power tokens left though. And I think I think we could really try to get rid of that trouble card. So I think we will now flip this one over for three more movement. One, two, and three. Oh, we could also move one, two. I just noticed we can move then, but again, those NPCs can't move here. So we are here and next we are flipping over our last tile here. This happens to be the right symbol here. So I think should be four out of six be a success for this one because there's a while. Let's check it. Here's a double. Here's a wild and there are two B 
biffs on it. So yeah, I think we have a solid chance, but yeah, you know who's rolling the dice here. So the only thing that can happen here is now that we are moving biff and that's definitely not good news, obviously. And no, that's okay. That's a wild, we take it. So we have taken care of this trouble here. Um, yeah, that's fine. We will draw one new power tile. Again, it comes in face down, but wow, two green. That's so perfect for him. So he can now really move the DeLorean like crazy, which he will do again. This comes into the game um, face down, exhausted. And that's really the end of his turn. On the other hand, he could still um, move to the DeLorean's location. But again, as he can do that anyway later on, but right now, or maybe, maybe that's the right thing to do actually, because he could move twice then sometime. Now let's leave him there. I think let's leave him here. By the way, this card simply gets discarded. We are not drawing a replacement. Only when the turn tracker moves onto a space will we ever add new trouble cards. And then over to Marty McFly's turn. So again, we are moving the time tracker. This time we will only draw a movement card. So let's see what we get. And this time, Biff will move, but we start here. Move Lorraine counterclockwise two spaces, which is, I'm not sure if that's good. And we will move Biff. And he will always move to the closest uh, pink NPC. So in this case, it most likely will be Lorraine. So let's see about that. Again, she will move counterclockwise one and two to Doc Brown's house. And next we will move Biff and he will move two spaces. So for each hat, you are seeing he will move one space or will meddle with the love meter if he already is there. So again, he will always move to the closest um, of those two. And right now that's obviously uh, Lor uh, Lorraine, one and two, and that's it. So he's not messing with us directly. He's only messing with those two. So he's coming now much closer. And whenever he comes there and has hats to lose, he will also decrease the love meter. It's really something we have to take care of as soon as possible. But that's already the turn tracker phase of Marty's turn. So maybe, 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 maybe we want to go here, go for this opportunity and maybe knock him over, knock him out for a round or two and then maybe deal with something because he's really not far away. And in theory, Doc Brown could help us because one thing I nearly forgot was that all those tiles flip over again at the end of the round. I will do that in off camera here. So, But in theory, you can really help in assisting your friends if you are in the same location, but then you will won't have those tiles available to you because again, they only refresh at the end of your turn. But I think Marty should be okay dealing with Biff. So I guess we could basically try to do two things. It's a bit risky, but I think let's go for it anyway. So we will spend this tile here in order to gain our three movement points. But the problem is, I think I do not get him here because in theory, I can move through Town Square, but I cannot move George through Town Square, even if I'm moving him or basically, you know, so I think I still have to do this. I think that still makes sense, right? So yeah, one, two and three. So right now they are closer together, which is kind of okay. Then I need an additional one, additional movement point. And I guess we want to go with this one here. So we also flip it over. We will move in here. Right now, that's really not a problem that they are together. And then I think we have to knock down Biff. At least we have to try. I think this was already a very risky move, but I need George here with in order to talk sci-fi with him um, because then I can draw one power tile and we would gain George's notebook item. I have no clue what this does, but I'm pretty sure it's awesome. So yeah, let's try that. So we will again spend two of our power tokens, the courage ones, which give us the right dice with a lot of stars on it. And then let's hope for some stars. And the more I think about it, the more stupid the idea seems that I brought George to Biff actually. Yeah, I was right. Okay, first of all, I did knock him down. That's the good news. So he will go down. That's cool. The problem is we rolled Biff, which means he stands right up. <laughs> so pretty much didn't achieve a thing other than spending two of my power tokens. That's really terrible. Wow. So maybe uh, that was really stupid. But okay, I'm here now. I will spend my last 
power die to do the opportunity challenge. So we get the love die here. So let's do some cleanup. And if it, so things are really going, so we are now rolling Biff again, and then we are already start to lose our love we have just increased. But wow, maybe should I take the guy and really move him out? I don't know if Lorraine always moves counterclockwise. It could make sense, actually. Oh boy, yeah. But I really need more power items. And I really want to check out this George's notebook item. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's roll that die. And that's a wild. I take it. Awesome. Whew, that was really close. So we have dealt with this opportunity card. I get a power token. And ooh, wow, that's the knockout for Biff. Awesome. This is really perfect for Marty, actually. Really like that. And we get George's notebook item. There's a whole pile of cards and you never draw them randomly, actually. Biff's homework. And here we have George's notebook. Let's have a look at it. And this one says, exhort this item to move George up to two spaces toward you. Oh, that can be nice. The problem is this card also comes in exhausted, unfortunately. I cannot use it right away, but he's with me anyway, so we wouldn't, wouldn't change a thing for this round at least. We have spent all our actions, um, which means we are moving back to jo uh, Doc Brown's turn. So the only thing that will happen is... Oh, oh sorry, no, we have forgotten one thing. Before we do that, we have to reveal a new opportunity card first. So let's see where this one goes. Because there were always three, and this is Bane's family dinner, Lorraine's house. Uh, draw ward power gain the Lorraine's locket item. Okay, let's place it right next to meet Uncle Joey. And here we have Lorraine with us in order to achieve this. And again, I have no clue what Lorraine's locket items. I could imagine it allows us to move her. I could check, but right now I'm not feeling to. I'm exploring this game for the first time. <laughs> So let's see what happens. No, we are moving here into Doc Brown's turn and then we are drawing the new thing. Okay. Oh, wow. They're moving directly, actually. I didn't know that would happen. Move George to George's house and Biff will move one space. I think that's okay, actually. That's really okay because this uh, means that George will move out of the danger zone and now Biff will only use his one hat to move one space closer to Lorraine and not doing anything else. So I think that really turned out to be pretty lucky, actually. Wow, dodged that bullet. So, okay, that was that. And then we are moving into Doc's action phase. And right now he has this awful lot of dice that lets us move the DeLorean. So I think we should use it sometime this round. We may not need to do that right away, but we also want to make sure that we are moving Lorraine out of the danger zone. So I guess, no, that's the prepare. That's not the movement. What am I talking about? This lets not let us move. This moves DeLorean. So this really gets us some of the DeLorean parts, which is also nice. We could use that too. So maybe we should start there. I think so. Yeah, let's do that. Let's try to grab the DeLorean cable. So we will flip over this one here. This gives us two green dice. The good thing is we only need one of those symbols. But here is Biff. Again, if we are now rolling Biff, and this is always the risk. Of course, it, it increases the chance you're succeeding, but it also increases the possibility rolling the Biff. And right now Biff is next to Lorraine. That's kind of a bummer. Maybe we should move her out first, actually. Of course, we could do that, right? One, two, three. Or we could do one, two, three. Ah, it doesn't really change a thing. I cannot come back. Well, that's really a bummer. Yeah, nicely planned, Marcus. That was simply amazing. There are tiles that lets you move six spaces. At least I saw those in the rules. But again, rolling now two is really critical. This could be really risky, actually. And we have a lot, lot of tiles, actually. So maybe... Uh, yeah, let's move her out first. No, I will... We decide I will use this tile here now to flip this to the other side. This lets me move three spaces. And I guess we want to move one, two. I think that's fine. Just move around. We still have one more movement point left. And I think let's move back here. It doesn't really matter too much. Or we move into the town square. We will continue to move anyway. So that was our first power tile. Then we will spend 
this power tile to move over to and yeah, now we can also move over here actually now it doesn't really matter too much actually so we could go for the more difficult one yeah let's go in here so we will move in here to the south shops in order to get some gasoline and now we will spend this tile to get the two green dice sorry that i keep changing my mind but again first time playing so Blame it on this. Yeah, I noticed here's also one with three, but now really don't don't change your mind again. <laughs> Let's go for it. We need two. I mean, that's not that's not that's really not simple actually. Maybe we should go for three. Maybe that's the one thing we want to change. Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's spend one more. Ah, no, we can't. We can only move two dice of the same color. So in theory, we could roll an additional die, but this needs to be a different symbol. Hmm. Ah, let's go for it. I don't know. Pretty sure it's stupid. And it's not. It's not. <laughs> Amazing. Cool. So those were three symbols, more than enough to make it. Do we flip it? I think we flip it. Yeah, we will put it next to Doc Brown's house. So that was already a success. I take it. Huh. What are we going to do next? We still have four more power tiles. So I think I would rather move down to Lorraine's house now. Yeah, let's do that. So we will use this one here to move down here to Lorraine's house. And there we want to meet Uncle Joey. So we are going to spend, hmm, I think we will spend both of our green tiles here, power tiles. Again, we are getting two of those green symbols. We only need one of those, so that's fine. So let's see about that. Oh, wow, that's horrible. And by the way, I'm allowed to keep re-rolling those dice, but I can't re-roll Biff's obviously. Those are locked. I can re-roll until I like the results, especially when I'm rolling dice that do not belong to the right or don't put me provide the right thing. So I could wait for wild cards. But in this case, that's not gonna happen. So he's now moving one space. Again, they're both here. And with a second die, he's really interfering with those two, which means this goes down by one. Oh, that's terrible. That's so terrible. What have you done, Doc? <laughs> oh, yeah. So we were not able to meet Uncle Joey. We still have one more power tile and we can use our great star Scott special ability. And I think I'm going to do that because I cannot do anything meaningful else anyway, right? So we will use this one here first. This lets us teleport here to the location of the DeLorean. Then we are going to spend this die here in order to get the yellow die. And for each of those arrow-y kind of symbols, we can move the DeLorean then one space ahead. So wow, those double heads were awful. Okay, let's see about that. And that's one. Okay, I take the one. Not great, but better than a biff. So we are moving the DeLorean one space ahead. We don't really have a hell of a lot of time, actually. <laughs> it seems to be a tough game, but I already like it. Awesome. Of course, again, I forgot to flip those guys over. So it's Marty's turn. Again, I will do the rest off camera. And the next thing to do is to move this one here. We are drawing our next trouble card, which is a level two trouble, which, wow, gang disrupts traffic. And we need two movements in order to get rid of it. So we will place it on the town square. And the effect says, instead of affecting George, Lorraine, and the love meter, each Biff moves Biff one space toward the DeLorean. If Biff is at the DeLorean location, each... What the f Whoa, that's bad. I was really wondering if there are cards that really let us move the DeLorean back. And right now I'm pretty happy. <laughs> but wow, that's terrible. That's really terrible. So place this card next here to the town square. And now we are moving it, uh, drawing a movement card. So if Biff shows up and only Biff shows up. Okay. So what does it says? Instead of affecting um, move Biff toward, okay, he first needs to move toward the DeLorean. So I think that's already progress because right now he's down here. So he has to move into this space. And if we are now playing it, Clever? Maybe that's not too terrible at this point in time. I take that. I really take that. Cool. Right now, we have a lot of those courage dice. And maybe we want to start doing something. On the other hand, we really need to start making progress because we are doing 
these love meter checks relatively soon, but I think I won't make it anyway. Not at least not far enough. I only have one laugh die. So that's definitely kind of a bum, but I have to start doing it as well. So maybe and they're together. I mean that's that's the perfect spot for those guys. So yeah, I think let's do it. So I will spend this here to move Marty one two spaces down here to George's house. There I think I want to do a love action. So I will go for this die for sure. And now I'm really thinking about getting maybe this die here too, because there are, I think there are two wilds on it. Yeah, there are two wilds on it, but also two biffs. So in theory, I could be, we really need to start making progress. We really have to make progress. So I think let's try it. Yeah, let's, let's flip it over too. And again, we need lightning symbols or hearts like crazy. And yeah, what about a biff? Okay, that's one. I take it. So the love meter goes up. But for every biff symbol we just rolled, biff will move one step closer to the DeLorean. So right now he's still far away. The problem is, in theory, it would be very cool to move the uh, DeLorean out of his reach. That could be at least something to consider, but... Oof. Boy, um, that was really not a very successful roll. So I think we have to do some biff control, I guess, right? Yeah, let's do it like this. It's a long shot again. So we will spend this thing here to move us one, two spaces into biff's zone. That's fine. Then we are spending our newly acquired die. This one, this gives us two of those biff symbols. So let's simply roll those guys. And now we really want to see two doubles. Okay, that's a double and a biff. Again, we are resolving this one first, which means for the first star, he's knocked down. For the second star, he gets a knockdown token. Mm -hmm. Now we are resolving this, which means we're removing this, but he needs to spend one more head in order to stand up before he continues to move. So that was kind of a success. And now we are here at Hill Valley High. So we could, in theory, try to do this one here. And maybe that's what we should do. Yeah, we will flip this one over. This gives us the greenish die. And again, we have a relatively good chance getting this cable now. There's really so many things you have to oh no oh, this is so bad again a completely useless turn there's nothing i can do about it there is no reroll for this oh this is so bad yeah but it is what it is so he will simply stand up again and again we have completely wasted our turn oh boy i really hate this game <laughs> that's so bad Okay, um, that's really the end of the turn. I will refresh the power of Marty, who's currently here with Biff, and George is up there. I think let's do one more turn this video. And it's over to Doc Brown. So we're moving this one here. Um, there we will see our first love check. It's a simple love check. So there are also checks with Heather times two on it, which those are really bad. And now we check where we are. If we are on the zero to 12, everything is okay. We are for every love check we are doing, we are only flipping over one of those pictures. If you would have been in the negatives, two of those will be flipped over. So right now it's, I would say kind of okay. So yeah, let's start with her legs here. So they start to disappear and also so lovely done. And this all reminds me of the X-File board game, which is, by the way, an awfully underrated um, board game out oh, there. Really love this game too, actually. It has this um, poster, I want to believe on it, which which the I think the players want to complete versus the, the Betty. But yeah, that's also really so, so, so lovely done. Uh, apart from that, we are still drawing a movement card, obviously, and that's okay. Move George, count no, they're moving also counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, three spaces and Biff will activate once. So counterclockwise, one, two, three, moving here to the parking lot, and then Biff will move one space closer to the DeLorean. But at least right now he's not moving in out. And I think now we really have to start moving the DeLorean out of here. I mean, from a timing perspective, 
this was actually pretty helpful too. So yeah, let's see about that. So Doc Brown is taking his actions now. So I guess we want to use those two dice because we can turn hearts into wilds, right? We want to move the DeLorean as far as possible right now. We have the same space. Yeah, let's do that. So we will, oh no, yeah, 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 oh, that's right. We will move, flip this one over and this one over. So that's the love die and the movement die. And again, we can flip this one over to turn the hearts into wilds if we need to. So let's see about that. Are you kidding me? Ah, that's so bad. <laughs> okay, so the good thing is now he will move and for each, he cannot move for each head, he will move the DeLorean back one space. He cannot move it out of the city, at least that's how I understand it. <laughs> Yeah, it is what it is. Um, so the second die is lost. But again, we are, have burned two of our very, very precious tiles. If we really would have ro uh, at least one or two, nothing bad would have happened. Biff may have moved in here, but at least we would have made progress. Now we are back to square one. <sighs> this is so bad. Hmm. On the other hand, we could now also start dealing with this. But again, here we need the love die. We got one... We could knock him down. This could also help us, but now he's also next here. And if the next trouble card comes up, um, this card will also go away and we deal out a new trouble card and then he's next to them. So overall, that was it was simply bad. It was really, really, really terrible. So I think, first of all, let's try to keep those together. So I will spend this tile here now to move three spaces. He will take George with him. One, two, and three. Back down here to Lorraine. They are united again. So I think that's at least something. And then what? Maybe we should now move to the clock tower in order to get the DeLorean hook here. We need three. And now I really see that three is definitely difficult. I think I will try it anyway. So I will spend one of his green tiles in order to move one, two spaces here to the clock tower. And then I will, sp I think I will roll four dice now. So I will spend this one. This gives me two, no three dice. I will, roll oh, I will only roll three dice actually. Now that's okay, better than two. And I will roll this one here. So that's a blue die. Two and again, uh, we might be able to re-roll stuff if we are not rolling Biff. So let's see, we need three of those symbols. Okay, you must be kidding me. Step out of the way. And... Oh, wow, I take it. I take it. In theory, I could now re-roll this one, but I have three symbols. That's all I needed. Okay, he's not doing too bad, at least. So we have made some progress. So... Two out of three parts already waiting at Doc's prawn house. The problem is still Orin is still miles away. And Doc still has one more die. Or rather, one more power tile. So in theory, he could try to move back to the DeLorean, but then he would move him one and then Biff would move it back. I think this doesn't help, help at all. So I guess we want to simply use this tile here. Maybe move him down and maybe try to meet Uncle Joey again next round or so, getting more power. We can still hold one more power tile. On the other hand, this would also be great for Marty. He needs those things too. No, I think not. Let's have him move one, two spaces here to Hill Valley High, and then maybe next turn he will try to get the last remaining DeLorean part. Oh, wow, that's really terrible. Okay, but that's already the end of the round. I will reset Doc Brown. But I think I will call it for today. Um, I really have to think about my stuff. I really might find some more errors doing editing. So let me do it slowly today, at least, and see how things go with the next episode. If I find something during editing again, I leave me some room to maybe take back some of the things, at least some of the errors I most likely had done or have done during this, this episode here. I really do hope you're enjoying my little playthrough of Back to the Future, Back in Time here. Again, there's not a lot of progress. The love meter is still very low. We already have lost our very first tile here. We haven't moved the DeLorean, which is definitely a bummer. But overall, uh, yeah, I really enjoy this game. <laughs> 
can be really punishing. I see that now. But again, I really do hope you're enjoying my little playthrough here. Again, a huge shout out to all of my patrons uh, out there. Really appreciate your support. You can now also join me here directly on YouTube. If that's more your thing, as usual, like and subscribe. Everything helps. And yeah, hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And until then, bye bye.